Hey everybody, welcome to this episode of the Brutal Truth About Sales and Selling Podcast. Got an interesting episode today. We're going to be talking about, about alternative ways to start conversations with people, to get to new accounts, to list, list, to learn about your total addressable market space, and to use technology and automation uh, to connect with people. This is, of course, one of my favorite topics. That's why I built the course around it. But I've got my buddy Tim Hughes on today from the UK. He's really mastered a lot of things with social and Twitter and uh, LinkedIn, and he's really had a lot of success with it. We're going to go through his story and what he does and how he does it differently than other people. I think you're going to learn a lot from this. It's not the same old, you know, digital selling thing. Uh, I really try and try and really apply it to the to the world because not all of our customers are in any one place. They don't. Not all of them pick up the phone. Not all of them read. Uh, unsolicited emails, not a lot of them are on social. So we have to build our toolkit today around where our customers are. And at the end, I'll give you an update on the course. There's been some enormous progress made. And as we go into the fall, I'm I'm changing up the course a little, adding a lot more to it, and uh, I'll give you an update at the end. But before we get into it, I want to give you an update, update on Pipe Drive. Pipe Drive released a new capability this week that audits a lot of your actions as you move things through the pipeline so that you can have automatic uh, messages sent and workflow added to what is already the easiest to use CRM out there. So if you want to try it, Brutal Truth, all one word, no spaces, uh, no underlines. Brutal Truth will get you a one-month free trial of it. If you already have it, check out YouTube. They've got a video on how to use this. So it basically has a lot of that automation capability that you get with those big expensive products that uh, you may or may not be using yet. Also, I've got that free course on how I use Nudge to monitor my total addressable market and come up with ideas of who to connect with every day. You Also, you can use Brutal Truth uh, to get a one-month free version of The Professional, and it is super good. To get the course, just go to b2brevenue.com, and then you'll see under the training tab, click on that. It'll take you to the, my list of courses. One of them is how I use AI to do prospecting for me. Uh, it's 250 but you get it free uh, forever, basically, uh, by being a podcast listener with the coupon code nudge. That's it. Uh, also, are you check, checking out video? COVID, COVID is the way to connect up with clients. Beautiful video emails are what's breaking through in 2018. So make sure you're using CoVideo. Give that a trial. See how you like it. Make sure you tell them you heard about it on the podcast. And wait a second. Let's get into the interview. Here we go with Tim. Hey, Tim, thanks for joining us today. As a way of getting started, tell us about yourself. Thanks, Brian. Yeah, really excited to, to talk to you um, about myself. Yeah, um, I live in London um, and I've been uh, working um, certainly in sales for about 25 years. Um, and I was very lucky to be involved in a sales transformation um, going on for um, uh, two years ago. Um, and um, that involved completely transforming a whole bunch of salespeople, about 2,000 of them, from um, selling on-premise software to SaaS software. Um, and um, amazing some of the discoveries that we found along the way um, and how we had to change things. And we were really surprised in the way that the market had changed. Um, so a little bit more about me is that that, that that involved me teaching people about social selling. I ended up blogging about it. I ended up... Um, getting a book deal and my book, um, Social Selling Techniques to Influence Buyers and Changemakers, um, is available on Amazon. Uh, it's a bestseller, uh, written in a way, in a format that salespeople can actually use as a workbook. So it's not about why you should do it. It's about it's a how. Yeah. Um, which meant that I set up my own company two years ago with a, a business partner, Adam Gray. So we set up Digital Leadership Associates. Um, and we've been going from strength to strength. We're now a global company with global customers. Um, we've got customers that, um, uh, you know, big customers that are doing million dollar deals through social. Um, and we're really pleased with the results. Um, a second book coming out on the 3rd of October uh, called Smarketing, which is, a, again, a workbook. It's about how people can transform their organizations uh, to a sales and marketing operating model of the future. So what we do is that we it's an it's again it's a very practical book about 
uh, implementing the uh, the a future operating model where sales and marketing actually merge. And what convinced you? I uh, mean, because you're not a millennial, neither am I. <laughs> <laughs> to, to really embrace this versus yeah, I'm 53. Yeah. Yeah. Versus, you know, the people that hold on to the old, uh, cold call pitch approach. W- what convinced you? Um, we, we were, we were see we, we, we were experimenting with it in my previous company and, um, we saw it working. Um, and I was very lucky. I had a, a sales guy working for me, Andy, whose dog had, 2000 followers on uh, Twitter. Um, so he was very um, um, social media aware. And, we, you know, we were able to get meetings, you know, go higher. And we are able to go higher quicker than you can with social selling, uh, with, with cold calling. Um, so, you know, we're able to get, you know, I, I deal with the, um, the high end of the market. So complex enterprise, business to business. Um, and, and I know people that are using cold calling at the low end, they're selling transactional things, you know, average deal size, 5,000, um, which would be seven and a half thousand dollars. Um, they're selling not to director level or C-suite. They're selling to managers who are able to sign those things off. Yeah. Cold calling is working and is working in the UK on that For, at the high end. So selling five, six, seven, eight figure deals you'll get, if you try and ring up and say, um, you ring up the finance director of Glaxo Smith Klein and say, "Can I speak to the CFO?" <laughs> You'll just get laughed at. Yeah, you know you won't even get through the switchboard. Um, but I can get a meeting with the CFO of Glaxo Smith Klein, and 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 I can get it very quickly. Um, and that's the difference. And it's actually, you know, we prove out the um, the ROI of social selling. You know, a good three years ago, and we don't get that argument anymore. Uh, three years ago, there was a lot of the, you know, what's the ROI? And I wrote an article. Um, called how to get 10 C-level meetings a week using Twitter, um, which kind of changed the, the certainly changed the the, um, the debate. Uh, that's still available on my LinkedIn profile, by the way. And 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 you know that was just an interview of a friend who was getting um, and still gets 10 C-level meetings a week using Twitter. Um, and just you know it's a very very simple mechanism that anybody can do. And. What are people not getting about it? Because there's, there's always debate, and it, it's almost kind of simmered down about social selling, and it's kind of like now just part of selling. Or do you see it that way? Or in in Europe, it's become it, it is selling, um, and and you know we, we well, let's remember that selling is always there's always been an, an evolution of sales. Yeah, um, you know I started 25 years ago. Um, I wrote out more, all my letters and I handed them to a typing pool. There was no internet. There was um, there was no computers. Um, uh, you know, and and the world has changed. And when the world changes, you've got to change with with it. Um, and you know, cold calling is actually a fairly um, recent phenomenon. Um, and certainly in Europe, I, I think we 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 do buy very differently than in in in, in the states. We've got a um, We've got a reseller in the U.S. and in North America, um, and um, you know, and and there is a very much a different way of of actually buying. Uh, Canada again is very similar to Europe. There's a certain amount of it. We always use the car um, metaphor. You know, if someone comes and looks at your car um, in Europe, you know, they'll be looking under the hood and they'll be looking under the you know and and kicking the tires and stuff, and they want to go for a drive in it. Um, and, and they want to feel it and touch it. Whereas in America, there seems to be, if you think that's really good, yeah, I'll just buy it. Um, so, um, but we're, we're seeing a big difference. And certainly in um, the B2B enterprise space, where trying to get meetings with senior people um, actually is accelerated. Um, you know, we've trained people where they've, you know, we, 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 we run a, a social selling course, which takes 12 weeks. It takes 12 weeks because actually it requires a change of mindset and you have to give people space yeah. to actually um, go through the process of, OK, what is a personal brand? OK, so how can I speak to people using a personal brand and not use things like I'm a tenacious, energetic individual <laughs> because we're all tenacious, energetic individuals. And what we're trying to do is actually because what what as buyers, what we're looking for is basically someone who's going to be a solution to our problem. And we know that we've probably got to talk to a salesperson. What I'm not saying is that this this cuts out salespeople altogether. What we what what 
we do as buyers is that we're looking for someone and we go, yeah, we know we've got to talk to the salesperson. But what we want to do is talk to an expert, someone who's actually going to help us. And that's what we're doing when we're, we're online and we're searching. Um, so, you know, for example, as with a, with a case study for this, you know, we put out a unique piece of content every single day. Um, there's 12 of us and we write enough content to make sure that there's a, a unique piece going out every day. Um, I'll be controversial and actually say, for me, writing um, and blogging is actually the way that I prospect. So yesterday, I spent the whole day writing. I wrote about three hundred, uh, three, three and a half thousand words. It's about six blocks. But that was like the equivalent of what I would have done 25 years ago, where I would have spent a day on the phone. Yeah. Uh, because we're using content as a way of, of, of reaching out to people. People will find that. People will read that and then they will engage with that and they come to us. And we get three pieces of inbound every single day. Now, that's not necessarily people ringing up and saying they want to buy. It may be someone saying, can you come and speak at a conference or, um, uh, you know, even asking questions. But we get three pieces of people coming in and actually asking us to, 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 to and actually engaging with us. Now, the thing about that is that someone's actually already been through the process of looking at um, uh, the competition or looking at what's out there. So when someone actually comes inbound to you, they um, already have a feeling for price. They already have a feeling for budget. They already have a feeling for um, uh, uh, what they want and how they want to achieve it. And so what you find is quite often you're, you're in the process of, I, I wouldn't say you close them, but you're actually empowering them to buy. Um, and therefore, the, 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 the buying process is so much quicker. And, and let's let's talk about that, because I think it if you present it as just a different channel or, or as an evolution, you know, because I lived through that, you know, from, you know, when I started, everyone was like, no, no, everything's got to be in person. And then I started in the drop by. <laughs> right? I don't know yeah. if you had that in the UK or not, but you literally would just drop by a company. Yeah. Uh, on, a, on without an appointment, which is unthinkable today. Yes, it is. <laughs> yeah. And then it moved to the phone, and then the phone yeah. was to set an appointment for a face-to-face, and the face-to-face was gold, and then then it was email. And then, yep. then we started to start experimenting with social uh, channels. But what, what hasn't changed, though? Because I see a lot of people doing it bad. Uh, yes, and, and there's a lot of people that have set themselves up as experts, um, and people that have been who are still talking about things that were relevant three, four years ago. For example, we would never recommend now to send an email. Um, whereas, you know, I know people that, are tr- that train on using emails. Emails are no different from a, basically they're a social network cold call, um, and in fact. An email actually means that you have less control than if you're in a cold call, because what you're having to do, you're 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 being boxed into what you want to get over in in those two three lines. Whereas on a call, you know, you can ring up and and because you know we can the way that we talk, we can change the way that the conversation. Oh, you're not interested in that? Okay, right. Well, maybe you're interested in this, and you've kind of got time to do that and maneuver. Um, we we would never recommend sending an email. Um, you know, you need to be in a position where. Um, uh, the, the, the person can recognize you from your personal brand as as an expert and they would want to talk to you. So there's kind of two ways we would see as social selling. One is the because quite often I get this. Yeah, we don't have time to sit down and write some articles and hope someone rings us up. OK, well, the, you know, if we think about the way that we cold called um, when we cold called somebody, we, we would get a number of answers. We would get go away. Um, we should if, if they were being nice to us yeah. uh, Two, they they might engage and say yes. Uh, three, they'd say, ah, well, I actually bought one of those. Um, and the fourth thing that they would say is, can you give me a call in three months? So we're, even when we're in, the, in the world of cold calling, we're seeing that there's different outcomes. Now, if we take each of those, um, I, I think, you know, if someone says go away, I think the fact that nobody ever gets up in the morning and says, I would like to talk to a salesperson. <laughs> <laughs> and the fact, the fact that we're, we're, what we're providing with people is a set of content that um, they can actually consume and be interested in is more likely to get them to engage with you. Um, let's take, let's, let, let, if we take the third one, um, which is I, I should have bought that, I could have bought that, well, I bought that three months ago. 
if you're actually putting content out there and people are in, uh, are, are consuming it, um, then they're more likely to have picked that, and you're more likely to have picked up all those deals. So, so one of the things that you know we've actually written about is about how cold calling people can start using content as a way of saying, right, there's what twenty five percent, twenty percent deals I lose because I I, I was too late. Um, what we could do is that we could start moving in a way of putting content out there and engaging on a social level, so we win those deals. And um, and the, the 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 third one um, is. Um, uh, in terms of the, the people that said, give me a call back three months later. One of the things that you want to be able to do is actually nurture those people. Um, and therefore, what you do is you connect with them on a social level and then you start sharing out content. And what they're doing is, that in, you know, after three months, um, is if you're sharing in, in engaging content, insightful content, educational content, so, you know, you sell glasses and you're saying, you know, hey, we've got this new, you know, here's, here, this is why you need to be wearing glasses. And you don't and, you know, you don't need to be, you know, you don't want to strain your eyes. And here's an article from a, 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 a doctor about making sure you don't um, strain your eyes for later on in life and all these sort of things. Actually, what you should better do is shorten those sales cycles. So so what we're doing is that we're really taking the techniques that we've used. And I'm not doing anything different than what I did 25 years ago. And what we're doing is that we're moving them into a, into a social or a digital world to enable people and start off um, uh, from moving from cold call into social selling. And then actually seeing that, 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 that what, quite often what they'll find is that, that they'll get. I mean, we're seeing 20, 30 percent incremental revenue increase. Well, well um, that's it, because, you know, when I first got into sales, it was a physical uh, book. You know, it, was, it wasn't a full book, but it was like a, you know, third, what we would call an e-book today, but it was a piece of paper. And then it would be advertised in a trade magazine. You'd fill out a bingo, what they call the bingo card, yep. which, which would be like a, a web form today. And that became a lead. In exchange for the book, they would send that lead in. And what yes. was good about it was that you had to be correct information because they wanted to physically get the book. Yes. So it it really hasn't changed a whole lot. It's just that it's been automated. Yeah, and, and you know, it, when I remember that when when you know, go back twenty five years, there was you know, there's five clients that I could deal with at any one time that I could sell to. You know, in the b2b enterprise space and there was all of these other people that were kind of coming behind and what you were trying to do was move them down the pipeline so i used to call that plate spinning so i would do things to, to, to every now and again you know they'd say give me a call in three months or something and i would be just looking for um articles or um and and i would send them and usually it was the old days i would uh, put it with compliment slip put it in an envelope and send it to people um that's no different from a post on linkedin or a tweet Right. Yeah. Um, so, so I'm actually, I'm actually, I'm actually selling no differently than what I did 25 years ago. Except what I'm in 20, 25 years ago, I could only sell in the UK because I couldn't scale. Now I'm able to sell across the world, and I do. And and you know we, you know we sell in Australia and Singapore, which I, I just could never could have done um, uh, uh, before. And and you can sell to more people as well. And the fact that nowadays, you know there are more people involved in sales in, in the, in the buying process. Um, so, you know, you'll get 25 years ago, there would probably be one person, maybe two people that you had to talk to. Now you're having to talk to five or six, the ability to scale, um, and, the, and to nurture those people and have conversations with people. And I have, um, you know, sales guys that have worked in, in public sector or federal, I think you call it. So working in, in with, for the government, who are actually are able to influence um, uh, deals through social, even when they're going through a, um, a tender process, purely because they're connected to the CFO uh, or whoever the decision makers are on social, and they're able to put out information, um, and they've seen that the CFO has actually liked it or something like that. So you know, it, it reaches into lots of different pores of society. Now. When you write a book about something like this, were you ever concerned that it would have to be something that would be very dynamic? Because, I mean, I've seen the social channels change, you know, literally probably every three months about what's effective, what works, uh, what, uh, you know, we went through that pulse 
wave, right, about a year and a half ago, two years ago, where, where you saw people become famous by putting out LinkedIn Pulse posts. Doing it today, eh, not so much, you know. But now, now today, videos and uh, text updates are really powerful. Yes. You know, what do you see working today versus what worked a year and a half ago? Um, I, I think that the, I think, yeah, you're totally right. The, the, the market is continually changing. My, I, what, what I would say that my, my book, even though it's two years old, is still relevant um, because it's kind of far more basic than some of those. Some of the real yeah. t- t- tactics, you know, yeah. I mean, you know, writing something on LinkedIn like, um, you know, uh, cold calling is dead in the first three lines that you can see and then writing, no, it's not. Ha ha ha. Got you all. Um, and which which is a bit that nobody else can see. You know, people are kind of doing that because they're trying to get um, engagement. Um, and it's kind of quite, you know, it's clickbait. Um, but you can use that in, in positive ways. And, and I think that with social, there's always going to be this evolution of of tactics that you can use to the point where everybody's doing it. And then you kind of need to find something else, which is I, I think you need to have an element of experimentation. And so we, one of the things that we try and do in, when we train people is, is talk to the leadership about giving people that culture of experimentation and, and, um, and making sure that they're empowered to say things that maybe they wouldn't normally do just because they need to keep trying to push the envelope and, and try things out. Um, and, and for some organizations which, are, which have got a very traditionally controlling marketing department, this is the brand, this is the message, do not deviate. Some of them actually find that difficult, but usually we break it down once they start seeing those things. So some of the things that I'm seeing changing is, um, first and foremost, intent data. Um, so I, I was amazed. So um, uh, Hugo Witcher, who is uh, one of my co-authors, uh, he works at a, a very large um, software company that I thought was quite conservative. And he actually w- was the person that lectured to me about intent data. He said, now, if someone comes to your website and they fill in the web form, um, they've, you've probably lost the deal. Because by the time that someone gets to your website, the, the, the amount of content that they've probably consumed. Now, if we look at websites, most websites, we have to be honest, are the same. They are yeah. pretty much a corporate brochure. They're pretty much set up. And Brent Adamson from CB Gartner basically was saying this just the other day, that they're really set up to basically broadcast to people. So most people see websites are the same, and therefore they, they see them as a um, just as much as 20 years ago, you would have rung somebody up and said, send me a brochure. And you kind of look at it and go, yeah, 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 I know. It. You know you're telling me everything I kind of know. Um, and so actually websites now are seen as being – um, kind of looked at at the end of the buying or towards the end of the buying process. So what happens is that now when people are buying, they go on and they're leaving digital footprints. And what you need to be doing with the um, the intent data is finding those things. And some people will talk about um, surge data. So, for example, if you think about a a large company like GlaxoSmithKline, GSK, they come out to market and they're going to look for a new human resources system. They've probably got, you know, a large budget and there's probably five, six, 10 or 12 people actually on the web searching for stuff about HCM. Um, And therefore people will pick that up and you can get, um, you know, intent data systems. If you're using Microsoft Dynamics, that's actually already built, built in using the social uh, Microsoft social engagement tool, which is actually within the money that you're paying for Dynamics. So it's kind of like standard nowadays in CRMs. And it's just something that people don't know about and they kind of should be. Um, so that's one of the things. And then the other thing is about the the website, which is that three years ago, people were probably using websites as a way to qualify you in. Now they're using websites to qualify you out. Um, and the 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 buyer is far more and we are far more sophisticated in the way that we are using social and content in the way that we buy. I mean, we, you know, if you go think about the early days of Google, you know, if we wanted to go for a, an Indian meal, we probably just would have put in um, Indian meal and hope something came up. Now, what I would do is I'd, because I would put in um, Indian meal in, in Southwest London near Richmond or something like that, which is near where I live. And I would be far more um, 
focused about what it is that I wanted and where I want to get it from. And most people are using that business to consumer knowledge in the way that we're buying in a business to business world. And, you know, for the people out there that are listening uh, that haven't really started on this or they don't believe that their market is online yet, what guidance would you give them? What suggestions? Um, well, they're falling behind. Um, 80 percent of the Western world um, is on social. If you look at the, the Hootsuite, we are social data. Um, last year, you know, more than um, uh, we clicked over the more than 51 percent of the world is on the Internet. And behind that, most of the 80 uh, percent of the people that are on the Internet are basically on social. And you only have to sit on, on any train in any city and you see people using mobiles. Yeah. Um, and social media is a, a it is something that's very natural to humans from from the first day when we were um, we were born on the, the you know, the, the Serengeti in Africa. We did two things. Um, one is that we learned to run. Um, <laughs> pretty fast. Uh, and two, yeah. <laughs> and two, pretty fast. And two, um, we formed we formed a, a tribe, or a, because what we wanted to do is 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 actually work with people, yeah. uh, because we found that if we did that, there was less likelihood that we were going to get eaten by a saber toothed tiger. So, actually, forming clubs and unions and 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 working together is is a natural thing for for humans to do. Um, and if you think about social, it's pervasive all the way through the organization. You know, it's used in sales, it's used in marketing, it's used in customer service, it's used in HR, it's used in research and development, it's used in procurement. Every department uses social. Um, and, and, and this is the, the people in the organization voting with their feet and saying, this is something natural for us and we want to use it. And usually the, the, the difficulty is the management don't understand it and they're going, um, what everybody's using, so everybody's on social but me. Um, and, and what we, we try and do is actually help people. And what we find often where we go into organizations, the, the people on the shop floor are saying, why didn't we do this two years ago? And when you're going after a new client, proactive, not inbound, what yeah. approach do you take? So um, we always recommend, and we do this in first of our um, session in our 12-week so social selling program, is to get people to build a personal brand because people are going to check you out. You know, everybody checks people out before you go to a meeting or, or you know, um, what, there's, and, and you jump to a conclusion based on that, that um, uh, profile. You know, you jump. If someone sends you a connection request and there's no context, first thing I do is I check them out and I go, I look at their profile and I think, if I think they're going to pitch me um, something, then then I won't accept the connection request. If I think that that person is going to add some value and and uh, then then of course you would um, uh, accept it. So you know, we had a we've got a client um, that uh, we went through the process of building them a, um, uh, a personal brand. We got them to work on that. We also do mentoring sessions one-to-one -one, um, because we found at my previous company, people would sit in meetings and go, yeah, yeah, I get social. And then they'd pull you to one side in the corridor and go, well, I don't actually get social, but I didn't want to admit it in the meeting. Mm -hmm. So as part of our program, we actually do mentoring sessions. Um, and so by the second session where we talk about building a network, they're already there on social with something that, that, that when people look at, they go, yep, I, I'd like to talk to that person. It's a bit like the, um, you know, the, trying to get over to people, the fact that we can go and go into a bar or into a pub and have a conversation. And we talk in a, in a conversational language, which isn't built around business jargon. It's, it's two different, just two different people, but we'd like to talk to Tim using that, that language of, 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 of the pub or the bar we don't want to talk to Tim because he's just going to pitch me something and sell me something. So um, we had a guy um, and a second session. We thought that he wasn't listening. We thought he was sitting at the back doing email. But actually, he sent 10 connection requests. And the person came back. Um, people came back. Five of them connected with him. Three of them came back to him and said, yeah, that's really interesting. Can we have a conversation? And one of those was the head of um, uh, uh, a, a big department in Microsoft, um, and he said, you're just exactly what I'm looking for right now. We've got a big problem. Can you come and see us? And immediately he was able to put a million dollars in his pipeline and he signed that deal. 
Excellent. Um, so, you know, and that, that is how you can actually go, rather than just putting the content out, how you connect with people proactively and you can be doing million dollar deals. So, Tim, I really appreciate your time today. Where do people You're go welcome. to connect with you, get your okay. book? Okay, so um, uh, all the books are on Amazon worldwide. Um, so Social Selling Techniques to Influence Buyers and Changemakers is out now. Um, Smarketing is out on the 3rd of October. I'm on Twitter at Timothy underscore Hughes, and Hughes is spelled H-U-G-H-E-S. I'm also on LinkedIn uh, as Timothy Tim Hughes. Um, and please, you know, um, connect with me. Send me a connection request. Please put in the contact that you heard me um, on, on this podcast. Um, and I'd like to love to talk to you and like to have a conversation with you. It's, you know, one of the things about social is that it, the conversation and the connection is what makes the world go around. Yeah, I hope you enjoyed that. Check out what Tim is doing on both Twitter and LinkedIn. I think you'll be impressed. Uh, you can also follow me, follow me on LinkedIn. I am getting super invested in it. In it. Uh, this year, it's been my major focus to kind of grow the awareness about the podcast and how I'm helping people start conversations, get the meeting, as well as closing the complex sale. Now, to give you an update on the courses, I'm adding uh, some capability. So if you're already in the course, go into the first chapter where I keep the dates for office hours. I'm going to be putting links in there for one-on-ones. Now, the one-on-ones can be either free uh, under the condition that I can share the content in the course and, and it'll be to 30 minutes and you have to show your work. work. We're going to do a screen sharing, but I will uh, help you out and I will make those available. It'll be, you know, not, not as often as you'd like, but I, I'm going to offer that up. Also, make sure you're emailing me any questions. All questions are answered via the course. I make videos and put it into the course. There's been some bonus sessions with a couple of students that I put in. So not only do you get office hours every other week, you're going to be getting the videos from the one-on-ones and bonus uh episodes basically i'll be putting in probably once a week once every other other stuff of your questions so the what i I want is the course to kind of compound over time meaning that we get we get more examples get put into the course i'm going to hold the prices for probably one more week this first week in september i know everyone's been vacation and that yelling at me saying i'll be back i'll be back whatever get back do i have to drag everybody to the bank is that what i have to do i'll do it i will i'll come and find you and i'm going to drag you to the bank if i have to I know everybody's out there, I can't get meetings, how do you get meetings? How do I, uh, no one's opening my emails, nobody's listening to my, my cold calls anymore. Well, well, I'll show you what works today. And we're going in, into the end of the year, this, this money time. This is where you should be looking at your pipeline and saying, how do I close these complex sales? And just take the course, you know, thinking about how much money, look how much money I saved. I know I lost 100 k in commission, but I, I saved a couple of dollars. That's all. Anyways, I really appreciate everybody listening. Hey, have you checked out Discover Org? They got a series of webinars right now. Make sure you tell them you heard about it on The Brutal Truth. They're doing a lot of great work. Also, Gong. Have you seen Gong's blog? Chris Orlob's Cubs coming on the show. Uh, got a great one on, on how to do your product from a nice to have to a must have and how scientifically they've shown what the best way to handle objections are. So just go there, read the blog, make sure you register and they've got uh, beautiful handouts, graphic ones that'll show you exactly how to best handle objections. And I'm going to have Chad back on the podcast. We're going to be talking about it as well well as you know probably some of the people who are using the product it's really amazing the results people are getting so make sure you're checking out them them and uh also discover orgs web webers are really good and they just did a partnership with bombora bombora is, is a company i've had them on the b2b revenue leadership podcast where they can tell who's in market in market means they're reading articles about what you do meaning that they're looking, but they may not know about you and your company yet. So it'll be a nice way to find out who is looking for your product before they even get to your website. This is incredible data. It's, it's going to be the perfect marriage of the, both uh, Discover Org's content and, and activity. So make sure you're checking out that. 
Uh, I also have a free LinkedIn course on b2bnew.com training under LinkedIn. Uh, I will do the profile reviews as fast as I can, but I'm really overwhelmed. I'm working here, working on Labor Day weekend for, for the crew. And are you connected up with me on LinkedIn? And it just send a request, just say podcast in it. So I, I know you're not a spammer or somebody trying to sell me SEO or some other pills or something. <laughs> just, just so I know. And if you see my content flying around LinkedIn, give it a give it a little up, a little likey poo. I'd appreciate that. Also, make sure you're following the podcast page. It's a company page, The Brutal Truth, B2B Revenue, Sales Questions. Have you been listening to that? All your questions, I don't answer them directly in email unless you're in the course. I answer them via the sales podcast, Sales Questions, Brutally Honest Answers podcast. So make sure you're checking that out. Also, the show notes has all the best links and deals with all the partners. Uh, Check that out, and we'll see you next time. Thanks for listening.